We're here at Cool Stuff Games in Jacksonville. Uh, it's right before locals. We're about to head on in. Uh, but before I do, I just want to answer one simple question. With only three structure decks, is it possible to break into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh? Come on in. I'll show you what we're Rules are simple. We can only use the cards that we get in the tournament or that we win through participation prizes or the prize support itself. We're going to start with three structure decks, pack of sleeves. Unfortunately, I already have a mat, so we're not going to be buying a mat. Um, but we're just going to be using those, seeing how far we can get by building a collection, and if we can actually break into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh with only these items. Okay, so rules are pretty simple. I'm allowed to trade. I'm allowed to do pretty much anything but buy cards. I can't use any money outside of what I spent today. Uh, and if I do a trade, it does have to be within 15% of the value. So for example, if I have a dollar card, I can't just give somebody that dollar card for a $20 card because they want to help me out in the series or anything like that. So we're trying to eliminate as much bias as possible, trying to simulate, you know, realistically, what would it look like if you're a total stranger in the environment, in the community, just breaking in for the first time, okay? So the structure deck that we're actually choosing today uh, is going to be the Crimson King structure deck. So we got three of these bad boys. We got a pack of sleeves, so we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, the reason why I want to choose this deck is it gives us a lot of flexibility going into some of these future formats. Uh, Fire King is a contender. It's coming out pretty soon. I think it actually comes out today unofficially and then tomorrow officially. Um, but what, it, it doesn't have a lot of flexibility. You pretty much build one way, and that, that's kind of it. Whereas with this, we can uh, hunt down for bestials. We can hunt down for horus cards. Um, you know, there's a lot of flexibility with the engine itself, what we can tech, not engine cards. So there's a lot of room to grow uh, with a deck like this as opposed to some of the other options, like even like trap tricks, if I was trying to be, you know, super meta to finding and, and some other things there. So um, choosing the Crimson King, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into locals, though. Uh, see how we do. I'm not very optimistic. I don't even know the combos of this deck, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, we're just kind of putting it together. Seeing how day one goes is more of a test trial than anything else. And we get an OTS pack. Hopefully, uh, I know DD Crow's in the current pack, so hopefully we pull that. So first day at Locals, again, kind of went about how we expected. Wasn't super optimistic, and that paid dividends because we didn't do very good. Our final Riker was two and three, so two wins, three losses, okay? Could have gone a lot worse, could have gone 0 and 5. I still got out the last round just to play it out. Again, I need as much practice as I can with the deck. Uh, we've got the best field center in the game, everyone's king. Uh, is this legal for tournament? Absolutely not. Uh, so if you go to like a regional or anything, you can't use this. But for now, it's a fun field center. I uh, can't be using it in so yeah, is what it is. Um, all right, so starting with the list, I do want to kind of go over this just to show you guys what we're working with, the basic shell. Some of this is subject to change based off of the cards we got, um, but we do have pretty much the stuff that's not going to change. Uh, three Soul Resonators, the main starter of the deck. Uh, we've got three Vision. Uh, this card's kind of like an extender, but it searches a lot of stuff, so it's really important. Um, three Crimson Resonator. Uh, it can special itself if you have no monsters. Um, and then you summon it off of Red Rising, and it does some cool stuff. Basically summons a bunch of dudes from the deck. Okay. Uh, one off here. We have Creation. We have Red. We have Synchron. Uh, I think that's, yeah. Uh, so this is like the main tuners. Um, I Honestly, I put this in just because I was like, oh, well maybe I want to summon a bunch of dudes and then do a thing. Uh, three is like really awkward for this deck as a tuner. Like it only works with this guy because we can level modulate, so. Uh, I am definitely going to cut this guy. I'm probably going to put another level one. Uh, Red Rising has this cool effect where you can special uh, out two level ones, so uh, we might just play double, more Synchrons. So, um, but that's it for the tuners there, uh, for the or for the resonators, for the non-tuners. Uh, we do have three Wandering King Wild Wing. Uh, he just specials himself if you have a Fiend Tuner out. Um, you're locked into Synchros, but whoop de doo we only play Synchros. Uh, and then on the following turn, any turn that's not sent to the graveyard, you can banish it, add a tuner. So it's actually a really good follow-up. It's, it's a pretty good card. I'll probably keep that in for the next foreseeable future. Um, Bone Arch Fiend, this is the main staple of the deck. Um, you add it off of Soul Resonator. Uh, so really, really good. It specials itself by discarding a card. And then you get to dump a guy. 
So the main card that you end up dumping is Crimson Resonator, make him level three, summon Red Rising, Red Rising summons this guy out, and this guy's gonna summon multiple uh, Resonators from the deck because you only control a Synchro. Uh, so those are like the main non-tuners. Uh, going into some side engines now because again, we only have so many cards that we're working with, we've gotta throw as much gas as possible. Um, we're playing the a caster s i don't know how to pronounce but the ant engine is what i like to call it um it was okay uh it just makes an eight it makes scarred uh but you don't have to commit a normal so not bad uh and I, it specifically says discard so that comes in handy with some of the card choices we're playing um which is the dangers so we're playing two Chupacabra because by itself it doesn't do anything. Playing three Nessie because the hope is to open Askaster with this. Uh, Chupacabra is important because it's a level four. You, you just you want level fours in this deck because if you have like Vision or any other level two Resonator out, you need to make Red Rising. It's like the main combo line. What do you do from there? I've still yet to figure that out because you know we, we didn't do very well today. Um, Resonator call, three Crimson Gaia. So this searches any Resonator, pretty self-explanatory. It's just a Rota. Uh, this card is very interesting. This card does a lot. It recurs from Grave, it recurs, or it searches from deck. So that's all one effect, so it's very, very efficient. If a dude dies by battle card effect, you special summon a uh, Red Dragon Archfiend. Uh, and a lot of your dudes count as Red Dragon Archfiends in the graveyard, uh, or two of them do. So it, it's actually very, very good. Um, it lets you just kind of live when you shouldn't. Uh, and yeah, uh, pretty good card, pretty good card. Uh, oh, uh, another thing too, uh, a lot of people try to like blow this up, but this card can protect it in the graveyard. So uh, once we actually figure out what we're doing, that's gonna come up a lot more, I assume. So good stuff. Uh, and then really the bad part of the deck, um, luckily we have a good trap. Uh, I feel like I need a disruption. Uh, so we're playing, I didn't get to use this at all today. Uh, and this is searchable. So this is just a searchable pop. This operates a lot like Branded Beast, if you're familiar with that card. Uh, but basically, if your opponent activates a card effect and you control a dude, uh, you get to just pop a card for free. And then if one of your dudes gets banished, you can special summon one of your synchros. Um, so this will be a lot better once we get access to Beast deals eventually. Um, but for now, it's really just a pop. Uh, this card, I believe, uh, I didn't get to use it all day. Um, yeah, it just banishes all monsters on the field, so in theory it's a blowout. You have to hard open it, you can't search it, so uh, that kind of sucks. And you have to control the synchro. So if you get stopped during your play, this deck's very susceptible to hand traps, um, which is one of the reasons why we didn't do so well today. Uh, you get to, you know, you, you kind of get stopped. But if you don't, then this card's really good. And if you synchro and it's engraved, you can add it back. Um, so if you, like, you know, discard it off a of danger or something or off of anything else, you get to just add it back for free, which is really cool. Uh, and then this card is just the best card we have in the deck, unfortunately. Uh, it's our only real removal for, like, problem cards uh, outside of, like, our monster engine. So against, like, back row and stuff, it's pretty good. Uh, against Unchained, I played against Unchained, this card put in a lot of work. Uh, that was one of our only other wins today, so uh, this card's staying in for sure. Uh, going to the extra deck real quick. Uh, we're running out a little bit of time here, um, but let me just start with the level sixes. So this is Red Rising. I've brought it up a couple of times, but when it's Synchro Summoned, uh, you get to just special summon a, a level two dude. Uh, I believe it's... Oh, any Resonator monster, I'm sorry. So you get to summon just a Resonator. Um, he's very, very good. He by himself can make this guy if you just summon back the three. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, or it can go into Scarred um, if you summon back the two. The main combo is to summon back Crimson. Uh, Scarred is uh, our main card. We're playing three of this guy as well. I just threw three ofs in um, just because I wasn't sure it was good. Uh, in doing so, I forgot to add Scarlight. So that was... Uh, an issue. It didn't come up at all today, uh, but in theory, like, you want Scarlight, so I'll probably have to cut something for that. Um, but this card floats into uh, Red Dragon Archfiend, which we're playing two of. Uh, I'm actually really happy I played two of this. It came up a lot, mainly because we're not really doing anything else with our turn. So, like, our, our common turn will end on this guy and this guy. It's not very good, I acknowledge, and we'll have, like, a pop. So, like, it's not very good, and negating a pop isn't, like, the best, which is why we have to play some of the other traps. Um, but this card on the follow-up is really good if he, like, sticks, because you just sack a guy, bring this back, and then do some other stuff. So, uh, we're playing one of him. Um, we're playing one Red Nova, or 
one red supernova, one red nova. I don't know what this card does. I just saw a big level and I put it in. This card was crazy today. Um, this was responsible for pretty much our only other win. Um, and then we are playing Calamities. Uh, this card's just, I guess, like good if you're going for game and you can just like summon it. I, I don't really know. It was fine. Um, eventually, we want to get access to stuff that lets us do it on our opponent's turn. And then, lastly, three hot red. This is just a negate. Targets any face up card, so pretty good. Um, and then going into the last little bit here, uh, we've got our side deck. It's miserable, I know. Uh, we've got three absolute power force. My thought process was, I don't know, we're going second, playing against back row, we can make it unaffected, or your opponent can activate. It doesn't really do a lot. It, it was just a card. Uh, this card lets us synchro if our opponent attacks. Negates the attack was my thought, so maybe we live. Also not very good. Uh, these could be anything else. Uh, battle fader, battle fader, battle fader. It's Battle Fader. I don't know. It's we're run. Uh, the only real side deck cards we had today were this and the Phoenix Chains. So uh, this banishes a card until the end phase. This will set a Phoenix Chain, and then Phoenix Chain negates a monster. So not nothing, nothing precious. Uh, we did, however, get an OTS back. And in that OTS bag, we open DD Crow. It's fantastic. So this will be going on our side deck. We have an actual side deck card. The other two cards we pulled were TG and Shino Birds Calling. Those will not be used literally at all. So uh, all in all, I'm really excited for the for the. Uh, for the challenge to keep going. Uh, it's been week one, uh, ended two, three. Nothing too crazy, nothing too bad, nothing too crazy. Um, we're probably gonna be doing about two locals a week with this. We don't have locals this Saturday, because the shop will not be doing locals, um, but usually we have locals every Thursday and Saturday. So uh, we'll be doing that. Hopefully we can get some more OTS bags, kind of climb up the ladder. I'll be looking to do some trades for like a two to the branded, maybe some other stuff, trading away some of this common. Um, but that's, what, that's pretty much it. What cards are you looking to trade into? Right now I need Bestials and really just Bestials. If I can get um, a Lubellion somehow, uh, I think I'm going to have to top a tournament to get Lubellion or pull really well of an OTS. Um, that's going to go a long way because then that lets us play things like Regained uh, and then obviously searching a pistol is very, very good. So uh, that's like the main thing we're hunting for. Outside of that, just like staples like Ash Blossom. Not having hand traps was terrible. So hopefully we can fix all that in the near future. Right now we're operating on pretty slim margins, but it is what it is. So, all right. We'll catch you guys next week on the next episode of Zero to Hero.